This is the radioactive vehicle storage site or cemetery called Boyakivka. Let's go into those gates and check out what's there. First of all, we're gonna drive by all those little hills you can see here. And those are uh, actually huge holes where radioactive waste has just been dumped and filled up with concrete. And then just left like that and marked with little warning signs. According to them, to the guards, uh, the nucleids are not migrating, are not leaking from that. But, well, I guess it's up to you to believe that or not. So, let's see. At the time, they did not really find anything better to do with all the radioactive waste than this. So, uh, they just put it there. Uh, vehicles, uh, these tubes, as you can see. And, uh, well, there were no real methods of uh, decontaminating all the vehicles, so basically that's why they were put there. Um, but uh, the guard actually uh, supposed that soon they will be disposed of, either uh, they will be decontaminated and reused as scrap metal, or they will just be buried somewhere else as well, so they are not in the open, but they are buried uh, same as the other sides. Uh, there's 600 units of equipment here, like trucks and tanks and everything. You can see it in, in fast motion here, just walking past all these vehicles. There are endless amounts of them, even helicopters as you can see here. Even the helicopters have been chopped up as it seems and then brought here and are just rotting away there. Let's just go past those vehicles and take a closer look. Helicopters, wasps, making them buzz still. Quite amazing to imagine how those helicopters were flying over the reactor that was totally on fire. And they were flying in insane dose rates and taking a look inside and dumping shit into it to make it stop burning. Behind this is a German robot that was used in the initial days after the incident and it's highly contaminated. You can hear both the dosimeters going off. Here you can see the sign on it. Let's measure it from a close. It's been there for a quarter century, and yet it remains radioactive. Despite all the rain that washed it multiple times, many, many times, washed off the isotopes into the soil, into the ground, but yet the vehicle remains very radioactive itself. Just comparing readings of the Altamas versus the Gamma Scout. Because as I said, I stated that previously the Altamas is pretty much Gamma only. Well, uh, the Gamma Scout actually measures beta and gamma radiation at any point because the tube is not shielded entirely. There's a shield in front, but uh, on the bottom it's just plastic covering the tube, so it will pretty much basically measure beta all the time, at least when it's a larger source, not, not just a source right in front of it. So, that's what I'm comparing. Well, let's take a last look at that nice little robot here, that used to help in the initial days after the Chernobyl incident. Just amazing. Yeah, <laughs> fucking awesome. The robot is for good. Awesome. More helicopter parts. You can see where the engine used to be. And even more helicopter parts. There's something quite interesting going on up there. If you zoom in, you can see. Uh, the helicopter's engine is actually inhabiting lots and lots of insects. 
They inhabit everything. They don't care about the radiation levels. Besides that, they're not too high anyway, but yeah. Nature is everywhere. Look at those tires. It's kind of frightening. Shall we move on to some hotter stuff? All right, all right, let's go. What does this one say? Have so, so the same value. Like 200 meters of power from these trucks. It used to carry liquid waste. Liquid waste is in water they had collected below reactor number 4. Of course they're empty now. The water has been disposed of elsewhere. Probably into a river. I don't know. But they're empty now, but still what remains in them makes them hot. It's up to a few millisievert power. This is just a few hundred microsievert, but we'll get to the millisievert, don't worry. Even though, as I said, they're empty. And the metal uh, provides some shielding. Here you can see that even from further away you get like 50 microsievert power. Really quite a dose from like two meters away from them. So uh, the liquids have been disposed of somewhere else and it's just uh, what remains of the liquids in there, just a thin film or something that produces all this radiation. That's one of the largest spots of uniform high-level contamination. <laughs> Well, the water apparently was inside them, so wherever the metal is sort of intact, it will provide some shielding, but if you move to a spot where the rust is basically eaten through this thing, this container, then you will see truly intense levels of radiation. This is, well, going up a little, 500. Measuring it around the tires and on the bottom, well, sure, there's, there's gonna be something, but look at this spot of rust. We're exceeding one millisievert, so I'm switching to the Altimas, and uh, you can see that even the Altimas is reading three millisievert per hour here. That's one hell of a dose rate on a gamma only device. You can see a radiation warning symbol in the back there, only just. And this entire rusty spot has totally leaked the radioactive contamination from inside this vehicle. So wherever you move it over that spot, you will get multiple millisievert per hour. Just imagine you were able to crawl into that thing, actually, and measure the dose in there. I wonder what the dose in that thing is. Probably, I don't know, 10 millisievert per hour if it's coming from all sides or... Maybe even more, able to make you sick. 